Hey kiddos. I know some of you are missing my afternoon read alouds, and so I thought I would uh, read them for you and just put them out there in chapters. <clears throat> I'm going to do the first two chapters in this one. This is a book called My Father's Dragon. It is written by Ruth Stiles Gannett and illustrated by Ruth Crispin Gannett. Hmm. They're both named Ruth. I wonder if they're sisters. They must be. <clears throat> I think that I wonder when this book was written. I think a while ago. 1948. Yes, so 70 years ago or so. A little close to it. Chapter 1. My Father Meets the Cat. One cold and rainy day, when my father was a little boy, <clears throat> he met an old alley cat on his street. The cat was very drippy and uncomfortable, so my father said, Wouldn't you like to come home with me? This surprised the cat. She had never before met anyone who cared about old alley cats. But she said, I'd very much be obliged if I could sit by a warm furnace and perhaps have a saucer of milk. <clears throat> we have a very nice furnace to sit by, said my father. And I'm sure my mother has an extra saucer of milk. My father and the cat became good friends, but my father's mother was very upset about the cat. She hated cats, particularly old, ugly alley cats. <clears throat> oh, she's not very happy. Elmer Elevator, she said to my father. <clears throat> if you think that I'm going to give that cat a saucer of milk, you are very wrong. Once you start feeding stray alley cats, you might as well expect to feed every stray in town, and I'm not going to do it. This made my father very sad, and he apologized to the cat because his mother had been so rude. He told the cat to stay away and that somehow he would bring her a saucer of milk each day. My father fed the cat for three weeks, but one day his mother found the cat's saucer in the cellar, and she was extremely angry. <clears throat> she whipped my father and threw the cat out the door. But later, my father sneaked out of the house and found the cat. And together, they went for a walk in the park, and they tried to think of nice things to talk about. And my father said, when I grow up, I'm going to have an airplane. Wouldn't it be just wonderful to fly anywhere you might think of? Would you like to fly very, very much? asked the cat. I certainly would. I would do anything if I could fly. Well, said the cat, if you really like to fly that much, I think I know a sort of way that you might get to fly while you're still a little boy. You mean you know where I could get an airplane? Well, not exactly an airplane, but something even better. As you can see, I'm an old cat now, but in my younger days, I was quite a traveler. And my traveling days are over, but last spring I took one more trip and I sailed around the island of Tangerina, stopping at the port of Cranberry. Well, it just so happened that I missed the boat. <clears throat> while I was waiting around for the next one, I thought I'd look around a bit. I was particularly interested in a place called Wild Island, which we had passed on our way to Tangerina. Wild Island and Tangerina are joined together by a long string of rocks, but people never go to Wild Island because it's mostly jungle, and it's inhabited by very wild animals. So I decided to go across the rocks and explore it for myself. It was certainly an interesting place, but I saw something there that made me want to weep. Chapter 2. My father runs away. And here's a picture of Wild Island. And I can see there's the string of rocks that they talked about. Over here must be Tangerina. And then you can see the big river that almost splits the island in two. It truly is almost a split in two. <clears throat> That's interesting because of its fresh water. I can see some crocodiles. There's some other little animals in there. Wild islands, practically cut in two by a very wide and muddy river, continued the cat. This river begins near one end of the island and flows into the ocean at the other. Now the animals there are very lazy, and they used to hate having to go all the way around the beginning of the river just to get to the other side of the island. <clears throat> it made visiting inconvenient and mail delivery slow, particularly during the Christmas rush. And crocodiles could, could have carried the passengers and mail across the river, but crocodiles are very moody, and they're not the least bit dependable, and they're always looking for something to eat. They don't care if the animals have to walk around the river, so that's just 
what the animals had had to do for many years. But what does this have to do with airplanes, asked my father, who thought the cat was taking an awfully long time to explain something. Be patient, Elmer, said the cat. And then she went on with the story. One day, about four months ago, before, oh, sorry. One day, about four months before I arrived in Wild Island, <clears throat> a baby dragon fell from a low-lying cloud onto the bank of a river. He was too young to fly very well, and besides, he had bruised one wing quite badly, so he couldn't even get back to his cloud. The animals found him soon afterwards, and everybody said, Ha! Why, this is exactly what we've needed all these years. And they tied a big rope around his neck, and they waited for his wing to get well. This was going to end all the river crossing troubles. I've never seen a dragon, said my father. Did you see him? How big is he? Oh, yes, indeed, I saw the dragon. In fact, we became great friends, said the cat. I used to hide in the bushes and talk to him when nobody was around. He's not a very big dragon. He's about the size of a large black bear, though I imagine he's grown quite a bit since I left. He's got a long tail and yellow and blue stripes. <clears throat> his horns and eyes and the bottoms of his feet are bright red. And he has gold-colored wings. Oh, how wonderful, said my father. What did the animals do with him when his wing got well? Well, they started training him to carry passengers, even though he was just a baby. They would work him all day and all night, too, sometimes, and they'd make him carry heavy loads that are much too heavy. And if he complains, they twist his wings and they beat him. He always try, is always tied to a stake on a rope that's just long enough to go across the river. It's only him <clears throat> and his only friends are the crocodiles who say hello to him like once a week if they don't forget. Really, he's the most miserable animal I've ever come across. And when I left, I promised I'd try to help him someday, although I couldn't see how. The rope around his neck is the biggest, toughest rope that you can imagine. With so many knots, it would take days to untie them all. There's a picture of the baby dragon falling out of a cloud. Those animals are not very mean to that baby dragon. Are not very nice to him. They're very mean. You should never like twist things in arms or pinch them when they don't do what you want. That's rude and cruel. Anyways, said the cat, when you were talking about airplanes, you gave me a good idea. Now I'm quite sure that if you were able to rescue the dragon, which wouldn't be the least bit easy, he'd let you ride him most anywhere, provided that you were nice to him, of course. How about trying it? Oh, I'd love to, said my father. And he was so angry at his mother for being rude to the cat that he didn't feel the least bit sad about running away from home for at least a little while. That very afternoon, my father and the cat went down to the docks to see about the ships that were going to the island of Tangerina. They found out that a ship would be sailing the next week, so right away they started planning for the rescue of the dragon. The cat was a great help in suggesting things that my father could take with him, and she told him everything she knew about Wild Island. Of course, she was too old to go along. Everything had to be kept secret. So when they found or bought anything to take on the trip, they hid it behind a rock in the park. The night before my father sailed, he borrowed his father's knapsack, and he and the cat packed everything very carefully. A knapsack is an old word for a backpack. He took chewing gum, two dozen pink lollipops, a package of rubber bands, black rubber boots, a compass, a toothbrush, a tube of toothpaste, six magnifying glasses, a very sharp jackknife, a comb, a hairbrush, seven hair ribbons of different colors, an empty grain bag with the label saying cranberry, some clean clothes, and enough food to last my father while he was on the ship. He couldn't live on mice, so he took 25 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and six apples because that's all the apples he could find in the pantry. When everything was packed, my father and the cat went down to the docks to the ship. A night watchman was on duty, so while the cat made loud, queer noises to distract his attention, my father ran over the gangplank and onto the ship. The gangplank is that little board that goes from like the dock onto the boat. It's like a little tiny bridge, kind of. He went down into the hold and hid among some bags of wheat. The ship sailed early the next morning. Oops, sorry, that was a period. Early the next morning. There's the ship sailing away.
And the ship's hold is the part of the ship that's in the middle of the boat downstairs. It's kind of where they hold all the storage and stuff. I'll see you next time.